Hi everyone, today is Friday so we're going to do some experiments and well the experiment that we're going to do is a low test with self blazer so let me explain what we're going to do um, first in the last video we set up a blazer application in a Linux server actually a Ubuntu server so let me show you the server here we have it I'm going to show you like the webmin page so you can uh, see the characteristics so this is a virtual machine with 16 cores and 8 processors and the amount of memory is 30 gigabytes so we have used a little bit of it it's like 13 percent as you can see here uh, the server is running nothing but webmin virtual min and then the Blazor application. So this application is connecting to Postgres, actually. So as you can see, like we have used almost none space, like almost none of the space in the disk. Uh, the memory is stable; nothing is going up or down. And the CPU, well, sees one percent sometimes. Most of the time, it's just zero percent. And this server has been up for 34 days and 19 hours, actually. So the server is kind of good. Um, we got it in Contabo. So let me show you what it is. I mean, we have it since the last video. And it's a virtual private server. Is this one. It's 14 euros. Well, like 15 euros. And you will see it's like, see? eight CPUs, 30 gigabytes of RAM, and and that is it's a like nice server and it's like really cheap, 15 euros is nothing for this. Contabo is amazing regarding that. I mean price and quality. So um, this server is only in this application. This is a Blazor application only with a domain object. Then we have um, this view to record how many people logged in and uh, login count so we can see how many um, instances we were able to connect to this application so with that um, how we will do the test is like we are going to emulate using test cafe around 200 clients 200 like people opening the browser logging in and inserting records in this domain object one so we don't have 200 computers here at the moment but we have like three computers that we will use for that so uh, I'm going to show you one of the computers that we're going to use and then basically the idea is we're going to create around 200 clients 100 will be running on my machine 50 will be running in my old machine and then we will use another Linux server to run around maybe 50 to 100 more um, so also we need to track the usage of the server what is important for me is how much cpu and memory was used in average so for that we will use mpstat in linux so this can give you the load for cpu and how much memory is, is a, a process using so we're going to use this um, to track the average of cpu usage during um, that period of time where the 200 and something clients were connected so um, then we will check the average I mean this is a really, really simple test but it's also useful because you will know hey I can connect s as many clients so okay we have the server here we know that it's not doing almost anything we have the application and we have this action that is clear data so I reset everything the count the records and so on and so forth and well um, let me show you what we're going to do how the test will run so for that here I have Visual Studio in this Visual Studio I created um, a separate um, project that is called simulator runner basically this program will spin up like a hundred threads or as many threads as I tell it and will run a test cafe test on each thread so if I tell it to run a hundred threads it will 
try to instance it 100 browsers and run the test 100 times. And each test will insert 100 records in the database. So I'm using this for Windows, and then I'm using this script for Linux, because some of the test clients will be running on Windows and some of the test clients will be running on Linux. So this is the script for Linux. It's basically, as you can see, it's a really easy idea. It's like you do a loop from 0 to 100, so it's 101 clients, and then you run this command in the Linux console. Basically, this is telling TestCafe to run a headless. That means that you will not, uh, you will not see the browser. The browser will run in a process without UI. And this is the name of the test that we're going to run. And this minus E means that the test should not break on errors. Why? Because sometimes laser applications, when you start them, they will throw some errors in the console and that will break the test. That is something that um, that just happened in Blazor. Uh, at least right now, it's not related to SAF at all. So to avoid that false error, uh, we will use that parameter. So right now we have the test, we have um, the computers that we're going to use, and we have the server that we're going to um, that is going to be the target of the load. So basically uh, let me show you i want to sh i want to run the test at least once so you can see it running for one record and you will understand what the application do so let's, let me try to open test cafe Okay, I have this cafe here and let's open a directory. So here I have this cafe and now you're seeing more files in the test folder because you see the runner there, the one that I created, but um, this is actually the test. So this is all in GitHub. Let me show you where it is. So here is the repo. I mean, everything that I show you is there. The staff application, the test cafe script, the simulator runner, so everything is there. And I will put this in the description of the video. Okay, so now let's run the test. Okay, so I have changed the idea. I run, I run the test like a few times already, and I realized that when you're using more than one computer uh, to track the results is tricky because um, not all the computers will be able to spin up the clients at the same time. That means that you are making the time longer. And if you do the, the average of the resource used per time, it will like dissolve between, um, if, if it's a long period of time. So the, eas the easiest way to do this in a more true way, I would say, to get like more realistic results would be to run everything in just one computer. So this is what we're going to do for the test. Right now you can see the server is like 0% CPU and 17% database. And here we have the application. The login count is zero at the moment. Let's refresh this. And there is no data here also. So what we're going to do is, let me put the console here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to start tracking now and um, after that we're going to run the test script but just from another linux server uh, so we know that all the 100 clients will be running at the same time and we don't have to wait for other computers to start or stop 
so when we do the average of resources uses per second uh, the result will be a little bit better so uh, first let's see let me yeah we don't have the result file here so we can create it that's good so let's start tracking and now let's run the test so this will spin up like a hundred um, clients and insert a hundred records with each client so this will take some time see the first is trying to log in already so second login so if we refresh here let's move this out uh, let's go to the login count we have two three This is <coughs> the test is running here, so the test is running here, so you can see like each time a different client is trying to log in. So and you can see that the records are being created. So let's refresh this. Five clients and let's see the usage. Now it's not zero percent, it's five percent. So it changed a little bit and it will be growing by time. Yesterday, when I ran 250 clients, um, the server reached the maximum was the highest CPU usage was like 27 percent or 30 percent, something like that, and the memory ended up in like uh, 17 percent also. So it didn't change that much. You see how the CPU is changing when we are inserting records with the test script. So let's count how many people is there already. Okay, we have 10 users uh, inserting data. So here you see it's growing and I think it will grow maximum to 30%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here. so you can see it working and I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to record everything um, and well I will put this like on fast forward speed or something like that when I edit the video so you can see all the time how memory is being used and that this test script is actually running so let's see how can I do this um okay so for that Well, so the test is over, so let's see the results. Let me break this process. Let's do an ls. Uh, now we need to see the content of this file, testresult.txt. 
So for that we will do a cat and the name of the file and well that is the <laughs> the results but I want to see the average in general uh, so the average in all CPUs was um, basically let's see is around 10% um, 11% because basically is the user plus the system so yeah is I think this is the value um, so well I will uh, do a separate video for the analysis and we will go through this file and I will paste this in the github repository so you can take a look to it but as you can see the usage was minimum like see here you will see all the CPUs and it was like around 8% in all of them and this is what we are running actually and then the system that is not, is not using also that much so in general I think like um, it was a success I mean I think that the usage is kind of low uh, because in the end I think that to make um, to put everything in consideration the um, what we should see is the leftovers here so this was was idle um, uh, the, I mean the amount of CPU that was idle while the other part of the CPU was used so in general it's like 75 percent um, well almost 76 percent was idle so that means that we use around 24 percent all the time I mean during the test and um, well I will put this on the github repository so you can take a look to it and I think I will make a different test also like to insert in batch like big amount of data and see how it goes and well, that's everything for this video, guys. See you on the next video.